So imagine if we could bring the best of emerging technology and human-centered design to drive collective action that can help to protect the future of one of our planet's greatest natural resources. Hi, every director at the DOC, Accenture's Global Center of Innovation based in Dublin. And today I'm going to speak about Reef Cloud. It's a collaborative intelligent platform to improve coral reef monitoring and preservation efforts on a global scale. And there are three key things that are like. Firstly, it's the outcomes from this purpose driven project. Secondly, the circular design process that we used. And thirdly, how we amplified the work to create impact. And to begin, I'll play a short video. A picture says a thousand words, and it can tell us about our coral reefs. More than half a billion people depend on reefs for food, income, and protection. They are also critical to the survival of a quarter of the world's fish. Around the world, we analyze pictures to inform the way we manage and protect our reefs. But climate change is accelerating the impact of many of the threats our reefs face faster than we can monitor them. To bring together coral reef monitoring efforts from around the world, leading scientists in Australia and the Pacific work together to develop Reef Cloud. Reef Cloud harnesses the power of human collaboration and artificial intelligence to equip us with the latest and best information about the state of our reefs. Building on automated data management, artificial intelligence, and statistical analyses, ReefCloud can estimate reef composition 700 times faster, meaning we have the latest information within days rather than months or years. ReefCloud integrates information from many users and provides an easy go-to platform for the latest insights. Our reefs are facing their greatest challenge. By working together, we can help give them a fighting chance. Find out more at reefcloud.ai. So Accenture first started working with the Australian Institute of Marine Science, or AIMS, in 2019. And the idea originated at a hackathon, which led to a six-week rapid innovation sprint at the dock and during which time we discovered that Ames was exploring a similar concept. So Ames had thousands of images from which they were struggling to derive benefit. And the findings from this phase were very promising. So we continue to expand our work with Ames in 2020, conducting systems-led research, creating new AI models, defining a value narrative and partner strategy, as well as conducting a series of rapid experiments. And then we transition the project to other parts of Accenture to scale Reef Cloud. So at the dock, we understood that this is a challenge which requires collective action. And we also found that the purpose-driven mission at the core was key in helping us to expand the team and grow a support network. And while we were working within a constrained budget, many people offered to help as a plus one activity as they were excited by the opportunity. And our previous speaker, Jennifer, described really eloquently about growing a culture of psychological safety and working nimbly to develop high performing teams. And these ways of working were core to the success of the ReefCloud project. So we joined forces with other parts of Accenture, Applied Intelligence, Perth Innovation Hub, Fjord Sydney, advertising agency, The Monkeys, and Accenture Development Partnerships. And our team brought capabilities across data and analytics, design, strategy, and innovation. And we also grew connections with non-governmental organizations working in the ocean space. For example, World Wildlife Federation, the Ocean Conservancy, and the World Resources Institute. And we then started engaging technology partners such as Amazon AWS and Mapbox. But we faced a number of key challenges along the journey that stretched the team and it forced us to find creative solutions. So these include cultural change, so there's a need for a mindset shift on, of, around purpose-driven initiatives to help move leaders in this space from intentions to action. And this is so important to increase the pace of progress. An initial mis mistake that we made was assuming that senior leadership would buy in and support. And in reality, this took significant time to help educate stakeholders and communicate how a broader set of value levers can deliver business and societal value. 
Secondly, around funding access. So initial difficulties in securing funding led us to explore non-traditional challenges. For example, awards bursaries to prove enough value to unlock further funding. And thirdly, around remote co-creation. So the project was run during COVID lockdowns and we didn't get to meet the client face to face. So we used custom design working sessions to align and co-create frequently. And then the fourth key challenge was around time zones. So we had a client base in Australia. We distributed team members across Ireland and the US. And on that basis, we, we took it in turns in terms of what we described as the graveyard shift in, in terms of that no, no one uh, location was, was always inconvenienced around that, that we, we spread the load among the team. And then in terms of the approach that we took to, to solving these challenges, so that the, the nature of this specific challenge and other challenges that clients are bringing to the dock are becoming increasingly complex. And as innovators, we need to evolve our skill sets to help clients navigate complexity and drive lasting scalable change. Recently, a European Commission report estimated that 80% of a product or service's environmental impact is determined during the design stage. And I'm really passionate about the role and the opportunity for design in creating a brighter future. And for this project, I adapted a framework created by the Ellen MacArthur Foundation and identified key methods to help to explore, define, develop, and deliver from a circular perspective. And I'll explain how this process was key to the success of ReefCloud. So the first stage, Explore, focused on defining an agile systems thinking research approach. And the starting point was to gain understanding of the interdependencies in the marine ecosystem to help maximize the impact of reef cloud and to focus efforts for coral reef preservation. We took a collaborative approach to foster engagement, designing interactive working sessions with marine biologists and divers. We then conducted a series of experiments to help synthesize. So to gain understanding of the, of the elements that impact coral health and how they're connected, we create a model known as a concept map and this helped us identify what we knew, what we'd like to learn, and how to articulate AIM's vision. And in this map, the elements are portrayed by the circular nodes, the connections are portrayed by the lines, and the current state is represented by the green nodes, and then the intended future state of brief cloud is represented by the purple nodes. We created an interactive version of this map to allow to, us to explore clusters of nodes and analyze the connections, and it was really valuable as it helped us identify central themes for the research. For example, environmental change, collecting data, describing data, synthesizing data, and influencing. And we investigated these themes further in later experiments. And then based on the understanding of the connections between the elements and some core themes, we next investigated cause and effect by creating a causal loop diagram. And our research on the current state of the marine ecosystem identified that a reinforcing cycle of social and environmental change with over 500 million livelihoods at risk as a result of coral bleaching is leading to action. For example, over tourism, pollution, urbanization that increases coral reef degradation where 75% of the world's reefs are critically endangered. And that in turn accelerates change in the marine ecosystem where 25% of marine life is in danger. And current attempts to rebalance the system create a second reinforcing cycle where the rate of coral reef degradation leads to pressure on the speed of data collection, which is slow and inefficient. So divers collect vast amount of images from monitoring activities, but they have no efficient way to tag or upload the images. And marine biologists have to manually annotate hundreds of pixels per image. And they, they, they struggle to derive insights or trends due to lack of connected data sources. And they then manually create reports based on scarce insights, restricting the ability to generate awareness or influence decision makers. And these factors indirectly contribute to overall coral degradation. Reef cloud will attempt to balance this reinforcing cycle that's detrimental to the health of marine life. It introduces foundational aspects such as standardized data organization and enhanced annotation to enable faster data collection and generation of richer insights and trends. And based on this, machine learning models can be trained to predict outcomes. And this ability can help to influence economic and environmental policy, 
inform action and rebalance the rate of societal and environmental change. And key opportunities for Accenture were identified around data organization and labeling, faster, more accurate annotation, generation of trends, and the ability to predict outcomes. In the defined stage, we leveraged our research findings to define the North Star vision, value narrative, and partner engagement approaches. And we also focused on auditing the user experience, prioritizing future state features, and co-creating concepts. So how we shaped our understanding around cause and effect helps us to define the future vision for ReefCloud. And the vision aims to outpace climate change in two ways. So firstly, is to support the global integration of monitoring efforts by defining best practice methods, growing awareness, and collating a really robust data set. And then secondly, to influence policy by creating that single source of truth, democratizing data access, and using modeling to predict future outcomes. We also created a narrative that considered the value of reefs from environmental, societal, and economic perspectives. And coral reefs are a vital part of the Earth's ecosystem. And the death of coral reefs represents a huge loss, as much as $375 billion annually for the local economies that they support globally, and the loss of habitat for a vast number of creatures that depend on the reefs. But the economic value of healthy coral reefs is staggering. A recent World Wildlife Federation report estimated potential net benefit streams of 30 billion US dollars per year if reefs were well managed and intact. To address these challenges and to take advantage of these opportunities, building strategic partnerships is vital. And we identified more than 50 partners from a market scan and we grouped them into part partner archetypes. And we identified seven metrics to rank the strength of synergies and engagement potential. And we also conducted portfolio deep dives into 17 high priority partners and 17 medium priority partners and created an outreach plan for pre and post product launch. And the initial partner engagement strategy focused on funding and technology partners to enhance the pilot, to add additional detection capabilities, provide offline and, and mobile functionality, and to integrate external data sets. And we also synthesized overall research findings to surface key pain points and root causes. And we then co-created with the AIMS team on future state features to address root causes and augment the user experience. And we asked the AIMS team to rank the features based on perceived value. And a key learning here was that the most desirable features broadly covered a flexible annotation process, a method for identifying algae, which was described as the holy grail by the, the client due to the difficulty of distinguishing algae from Carl, and then the ability to intuitively analyze and report on data insights. So we ran a series of experiments based on these, um, these prioritized features, and we focused on developing that partner engagement strategy to secure the long-term viability of this initiative, focused on testing high priority opportunities for desirability and feasibility, creating low fidelity mockups to iterate concepts at pace, and also in-depth scenario tests to bring the concepts to life. So this included a UI concept to bring the features to life. And we've, we firstly focused on analysis and reporting features. And we conducted scenario tests and surveys on, on low to medium fidelity designs. And we found this to be a highly effective way of rapidly iterating concepts. The design analytics teams also co-created a future state annotation experience that was designed to ease the burden on marine experts. And this approach improves the speed, accuracy, and efficiency of the annotation process, reducing cognitive load with guided workflows. And the key features here include flexibility to select manual or automated annotation, the option to set confidence thresholds based on the extent to which the data set has been trained by AI models, the ability to quickly and easily paint similar segments 
rather than manually annotating hundreds of pixels per image. And then also contextual prompts on car species based on machine learning. And this new flow enables tasks to be completed in just a few clicks. And a key learning here is the combination of automatic methods and human insight offers a smoother annotation process with a more thorough result. We also ran a series of technology focused experiments, for example, image segmentation to define coral health, the ability to distinguish algae from dead coral, optimizing the cloud architecture to reduce overall cost. That was their previously their biggest monthly outgoing and then enhancing the infrastructure pipeline to improve security. And the work led by the doc in the explore and define stages was then transitioned to Accenture Applied Intelligence for the develop phase. And this phase focused on advancing concepts with rapid user testing and iteration, refining the brand experience, creating high fidelity designs, and supporting UI specifications. And during the beta phase, we rapidly tested and iterated designs with over 200 users across 24 countries. And this includes scientists and managers from Australia, Fiji, Palau, Vanuatu, and the Maldives, who've been closely collaborating with NGOs, universities, and government organizations to ensure that individual needs are considered. So from local stakeholders, for example, indigenous communities, marine parks, state managers, to national and international bodies, for example, national ministries and international science advisory networks. And in terms of the, the look and feel and the personality of the product, a brand style was developed using color to emphasize key information and KPIs on Carl Health and change over time. For example, and highlighting controls that allow users to quickly navigate to different spatial levels or save and export selections. And ReefCloud also includes subtle animations and parallax scrolling to create a rich user experience. And finally, the scale stage focused on launching ReefCloud publicly, gathering client feedback, and amplifying the work to maximize impact and gain wider support. So ReefCloud was launched publicly at the Our Ocean Conference in Palau in April 2022. And so what's next? Well, from a circularity perspective, we've identified three key dimensions to focus on to ensure the long-term viability of ReefCloud. So firstly, it's about strengthening the core platform, including UX enhancements, mobile functionality, data interoperability, additional applications of machine learning, for example, new species and new diseases in other geographical locations. Horizon 2 is looking at building tangential applications. For example, application of AI algorithms in coral nurseries, augmenting computer vision to identify other indicators of ecosystem vitality, integration with public fishery and monitoring systems. And then the third horizon is around platform monetization. So this includes integration with carbon market mechanisms, custom-made tourism applications, for example, diving or hotel experiences, and then utility for supply chain ESG monitoring. So our client and thought partner on this initiative, Dr. Manuel Gonzalez Rivero, has described the work as the biggest breakthrough he's had to date. We finally got to meet him. Uh, so after, uh, a significant time of working remotely uh, and on, on many working sessions and, uh, and, and conference calls, he visited the dock in July uh, the, of last year. And I, I, I think it, it really helped to, you know, to, to further deepen the, the relationship between Accenture and Ames. We're, we're working with him in, on the, you know, the, the future vision with, with this now a, a live platform of how can we ensure ensure the long-term viability? How can we look at um, sharing best practices? How can we look at continuing to grow that, that partner ecosystem? And on this work, it's not just the scientific community that's taken notice. So an Accenture global media release and coverage from 15 international media outlets has raised the profile internally and externally. 
And additionally, industry experts such as Richard Fevers and Vincent Knifel have become strong advocates for the program. And if I was to call out any one factor that was key to the success of the initiative, it would be the approach that we took to amplification in terms of growing awareness, getting buy-in, proving value. It had a ripple effect. It really started to generate momentum for the project. And those are key learnings that I will take to to when we're working on future wicket challenges going forward. And then beyond the scientific community, ReefCloud has won sustainability awards at the Asia Pacific Spatial Excellence Awards, the Irish Design Institute Awards. It also won an award at the Accenture Eco Innovation Challenge in 2021, which helped to generate funding to scale the platform and provide access to mentoring support from Accenture subject matter experts. And then more recently, ReefCloud was recognized at the Fast Company Awards World Changing Ideas in 2022. Coral reefs are home to one quarter of the plant's marine life and are facing their greatest challenge. And with reef cloud, we aim to give them a fighting chance. So I look forward to evolving the circular design principles I learned from this project and applying them to address other wicked societal challenges. Thank you so much. And with that, I'll open to any questions. Great, thank you, Stephen. That was um, really interesting. I, I... Kind of, it's one of those problem spaces that I never even knew existed <laughs> until until I heard you talking about it. But it, it, it kind of makes sense, and it, it, um, it's good to see that, that some progress is being made in that area. Um, so yeah, if anybody does have any questions, please do um, write them in. Um, otherwise, I'll, I'll keep the ball rolling again. Um, so w one thing that... Um, I was kind of just when you were going through your phases, your research define deliver, you were showing in the define phase is when you showed the demo and and things like that. So what is your distinction between define and deliver? Because it, I would have assumed now, now there's two things that have jumped into my head. The first was that was all just a prototype and smoke and mirrors, or you're actually building through the define phase. Yeah. It, it, it's a super question. So where when we work on projects, we we commonly uh, define short, sharp phases to prove enough value. So, so scope the work, experiment, test, prove value, refine. And so, in in the define stage that you were speaking to, there it was we were building on our our research understanding. We were looking to take our hypotheses, test them bring some of the key opportunity areas or features to life. And, and at that early stage, uh, test with different groups of users. So, so whether it was divers, whether it was um, uh, policymakers, external stakeholders, bring them to the, those wider group of, of stakeholders, get their reactions refined. So th th those early stage scenario tests might would have been created by a, a, a combination of us um, co-creating with the client of design teams, analytics teams, software teams working really closely together to help bring those features to life so that there's um, because what we're testing there for is desirability, feasibility and viability. And also in this sustainability space for if we want to call it integrity or responsibility as well, that those are four key vectors that we included as, as part of our process for testing and and we were looking to, to make sure that we had, you know, just enough robustness uh, as, as part of our approach to, to make sure we could stand over the work, br bring it to those different groups, test, get the reactions, refine and, and move on. So that, that's to your, your question there in terms of the level to which it was smoke and mirrors are fully developed. I, I'd, the way I would frame it is we, we started lo-fi, we rapidly iterated and tested. As we gathered feedback, we gradually iterated that to, to medium fidelity, to building out scenario tests. And then once we, we validated with, with wider groups, that's where we started to, 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 to create those, those full flows to, to start full development uh, around that. Because there was a huge amount of, of research from a technical perspective that went into this for example, in terms of looking at uh, mapping at different spatial levels and how to navigate users through that and, and how to 
then develop custom reports off the back of that. So I, for me, I think it was the, the level of close collaboration across the team really helped us to move at pace. So it's kind of almost a blurring of there isn't like a hard and fast defined deliver boundary. The, the, it, 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 I, I think that's that's a really fair point in terms of that the delivery is in the define the delivery. It's incremental. So it's it's uh, so, so you may be looking to, to for example, prove value based on a specific hypotheses. So if it's if it's looking at can we distinguish between algae and dead coral was one um, focus area for us. So it was looking at that from a technolo technology perspective, looking at it from a, a, a user perspective. What are the jobs to be done here? What, where, what are the key barriers in this space? Where are we looking to create additional value? Mapping out flows based on that, then looking to bring it to make that real in a way that we could um, walk users through and like a, an as is and a to be flow. Um, but but always with that longer term view in terms of, OK, how would we then scale this? So that's to your point, your question there in terms of where it's kind of it almost merges a little bit or it's blurry that we're 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 very much in the defined stage, but with a view to the deliver stage. Great. Uh, thanks for that. Um, there's one question came in or well, actually, we're, we're getting flooded with questions. We won't have time to answer them all. Um, but as I said, we'll, we'll put those questions on the Slack channel and I'll invite Stephen to answer them there. But um, let me just read a couple of them and see. Um, I might jump in with the, the team size question. So Alanya has asked, she's asked specifically how many designers were involved. With. Can you just elaborate on the team, the full team who were involved? Of course. Yeah, um, yeah so it was uh, from, from it from a team of all the, the projects I've worked on recently, the, the, the breadth of the skills that we had on this project was, um, it, it was really comprehensive. So we, we had a system designer, we had an interaction designer. Um, my role, I'm from a design background, but worked as a project lead on this particular initiative. We, we then had uh, skills in terms of, we had a commercial expert who we, who we worked with. We, we had, um, a strategy expert who helped us to to build that um, the, the the partner engagement approach. Um, the, the the commercial expert helped us to to make connections with some of the the the, um, the 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 potential partners in terms of what's the value offering for them, what's the 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 right kind of transaction there. Um, also, we worked with we, we did at least three analytics experts that we worked with on, on this project uh, who looked at the, the image segmentation. So that, that emerging technology of how best to make use of that, what, what, uh, how that can add value, not just on its own, but when, when you've got the AI and the human working together, how that can deliver the, the optimal experience. And then as well as that, we had a software expert looking at the the technical feasibility of delivering on this so if we're going to create a, a product of all of those specifications that are required so if, if that was our core team starting out but then as we grew we we saw that the need that we were we were working on this project for a given length of time but we also needed to have that view you know three years into the future five years into the future where do they need to be who's going to be working with them to to, to help them continue progress. So that's why we transitioned the project at a certain stage. We brought in Accenture Development Partnerships who are experts at working on that longer term strategy. Um, also Accenture Applied Intelligence who w once we had brought the, the, the product to, to having all of the user journeys defined, to having the, the, the concepts mapped out, they, they took it to that next stage of, of full scaling. Um, so, so the, fr from there, the, the, the team de developed in terms of there was a, a larger software team. There was a, a branding team from, from Fjord Sydney that got involved. And then I met, called out in terms of the awareness piece. That's where um, the advertising agencies, the monkey got, monkeys got involved. So broad range of skills. But for me, it was how closely we were knitted together was key to the success of the project. Great. Now, it is nice to be able to lean on that many different specialities. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. I know it was, it was really rewarding. It was, it was, and for me, a key learning from that was 
if, as designers, if we can stretch to have that level of understanding or at least appreciation for other people's roles and what they do and the value that that can bring of, I think that's where the magic can happen. That's where there can be that the the real kind of sparks can come when you, when you're when you're co-creating on opportunities. Excellent. And um, as I said, we do have some other questions, so I will post them into the Slack channel after this. Um, but thank you very much, Stephen. Um, obviously, people were interested because questions started coming flooding in there at the end. But but thank you very much for sharing your story. Great. Thank you so much. Thanks, Boyd.